just want to say, I'm not going to click off today. I'm going to stay here because some of the people that come on and then once I click off, I was told that the circuit is so jammed that people can't get in. So if you see um, the screen kind of stalling or, or glitching, um, don't, don't panic at that. It, it, it's just because a lot of people are logging in and it's starting to jump and maybe Facebook will see that and um, afford me a little more space so that um, everybody can get in that wants to come in at the same time. Well, we're getting ready to go into today's lesson and I just wanted to bring uh, to your attention that um, the reason why I decided or the Lord decided for me that um, I would take this form of ministry for you that are watching from around the world. Um, we've got people on here from Australia, people have uh, uh, checked in from Moscow, um, all part Trinidad, uh, Jamaica, London, England, um, uh, South America, Brazil, uh, some of everywhere. And we, we, we thank God for that broad reach and we thank God for technology. But I don't want anybody to really get it twisted as to uh, me sitting here doing this broadcast uh, Monday through Friday at three with me. Um, everything that I'm going to teach, everything that I'm going to try to impart into you are all things that I have walked through myself. So I'm not sitting here, you know, handing you a, a bag of crap. You know, I, I'm not sitting here, you know, giving you um, uh, different things that you could do for your life that I have not done for my life. That's how I know it works. And that's the reason why you see me teaching it with such a conviction because I know that it works. And um, uh, many of you that know me already know I would never minister anything that um, I haven't walked through and I haven't walked out and I haven't proven it to be something that absolutely works. And um, with that being said, you know, I want you to email me your questions at um, at three with me at JuanitaBonham.com if you have any questions or you have any comments. And um, that's why you don't see me really paying attention. And I want to commend you all for one thing. I noticed that uh, when there are the very few that do come up, uh, subjects that are off what we're talking about and, and, and into something else that has nothing to do with our lives. I noticed that the people that are on, you absolutely ignore those people. And I appreciate that because it, not, I, not that I appreciate it because I run from it because I run from nothing. You know, I, I'm, I'm not afraid of anything. I'm not afraid of confrontation when I walk in truth. So but I just don't have time to bend over with stuff like that because um, some of it gets so low that if I bend over too far, I'm gonna bump my head and probably knock myself out. That's how low it is. And so we really don't have time on this particular broadcast for a bunch of dumbness. So I'd appreciate if you would leave the dumbness someplace else or if you wanna email me something that is long and ridiculous, email it to me so I can throw it away. Okay, with that being said, um, today we're going to talk about uh, the power of agreement. The power of agreement. And I realized yesterday, you know, was a very stirring day for me. Um, I did not expect, as one of my um, dance moms say at DeVore uh, Dance School, she always say, I, I invite her to my empowerment classes and she always asks me, are y'all going to catch the Holy Ghost? Because if y'all going to catch the Holy Ghost, I'm going to be scared. So, you know, I'm sorry yesterday I caught the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but um, that thing about that knowing that that uh, what God is doing is more than a box, that took me out of here. I mean, I, I went to bed with it. I couldn't, I couldn't sleep hardly last night in thinking about that what the Lord has afforded me to embrace is more than just religion. It's more than just a, a box, but it's a way of life. And it's a way to a prosperous life and a life of peace and a life of uh, a lot of solidarity. And, and, and I just appreciate God for opening up that part of my mind. Do you not know that it is a gift from God for you to believe? It is a divine gift from God for you to have the power to believe. Because the scripture said that Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of my faith. 
which means he originates what I believe. He started what I was to believe. I had no belief system until he gave me one. And so with that being said, the thing that, um, the thing that really blessed me with that being said is that because he, he jump started because he is the originator of what I do believe, then the responsibility to maintain my belief system, um, he takes full responsibility in that because um, the scripture said in the book of Hebrews that he's just not the author, which means he didn't just originate it, but he's the finisher of what I am to believe, which means um, he becomes responsible for the maturity of my belief system so that I can finish the course. Yes. So the reason why, another reason why you don't um, really particularly um, involve a lot of your emotions in uh, what you are believing God for and how you're standing on the word of God and uh, standing for your vision. The reason why you don't put your emotions in it a lot is because you didn't give yourself to believe that. And that was a divine key to me that just struck me out. When he said to me one day, you know, uh, in the midst of me, you know, trusting him for things that I now see that have come to pass, um, I was like, well, how is this going to happen? And God, da, da, da. And I was just kind of just all broke up about it. And, you know, I'm walking around moping. And one day he just simply said to me, do you think, do you think you have the ability to believe that? He said, I gave you to believe that. You are only a carrier of what I've asked you to carry. And the only reason why you're carrying this thing is because I can trust you to carry it to the full term. But it's my belief. That took me out, people. He said, it's my belief. I took what I believe, and I put that in you and asked you to carry for me what I believe until I can make what I believe made manifest in the earth realm for people to see me and know that I'm God. That brought such a peace, and I hope that just brought a peace to somebody right there. No, it's his belief. It's what God believes that he desires to see happen in the earth realm. And you're just the vessel that he's chosen to become impregnated with that belief and carry it out. Look at Mary. She was my own business. She was a virgin. She wasn't thinking about giving birth to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but it was God's belief. It was what he desired. And he placed that in her and asked her to carry that for him. Are you hearing that? And so it is his job to give you shots of encouragement. It is his job to make sure that you stay motivated. Oh, yeah, you have those moments where you slump by the wayside and, you know, you feel. But then have you always noticed that every time you have those moments where you, you slumping by the wayside and you feel in some sort of kind of way, God has a way of always coming in and sending somebody. Or you could be standing at a grocery store line and you will look around and, and, um, and, and, and see a sign or, 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 or see a, a little saying or you will hear somebody over your shoulder talking to somebody else and they'll say something like, I don't care what happened, I'm not quitting. See, it's those little things right there that you can depend upon the Father to always meet you with a word of encouragement. Why? Because you're pregnant with his belief. What real man don't take care of a pregnant woman that's pregnant with what he is? It's his. It's his. It's his, and he's going to make sure that you are well taken care of. It's one of the reasons why he has sat me here. Out of all the things that I could be doing, he said, no, I want you here at 3 o'clock because it's time for me to give somebody a shot in the arm based upon what they're carrying for me. So with that being said, I want to talk about um, today as well something that I think is so necessary and it's called the power of agreement that's the name of this particular message today is the power of agreement and um i said to you that i wouldn't you know uh go to launch too far in it because i'm actually trying to show us how to use the scripture and bring it into our everyday lives without displaying acts of religiosity you can be spiritual without being religious and so and I think that when we 
when we don't understand that, then um, we trap ourselves behind the walls of pages and what's on the page never becomes a reality in our lives. And so we don't live that word out because we don't know how. We just know how to read it. We don't know how to live it. And so, that, you know, that's a big difference in uh, reading something that you don't know how to bring into action. And, and so I think what's needed in this hour is um, our ability to put it into action. And that's why you're not going to hear me, you know, giving you a lot of big words and, you know, a lot of deep theory and, and all of that. Because you know what? It, it, it's simple. It's not that deep. It's not that hard. And it's not that hard to be understood. That's why the scripture said even a fool couldn't err. Because the word of God and the lifestyle of living a spiritual life, which means living a life that is in tune to my surroundings. Living a life that is not only in tune to my surroundings, but I'm in tune with heaven. And heaven is in tune with me. And so when I walk in the earth realm, I walk as a fine-tuned vessel where my engine is humming. And I'm aware of what is around me. And I don't have to open my mouth. I can walk in a building and, and sense when, when this is not the atmosphere for me. And I can also walk in a building and people sense, mm, don't say that around her. She's not that girl. And so... We want to become spiritual so that we could have discernment because there's a lot of people that know a lot of scriptures, but they're not spiritual. They're not spiritual because they don't know how to take that power and make that power work in the natural. So here we're looking at today's scripture in Matthew 25 and 14 through 30. And um, I know it kind of sounds like it's, um, it's a lot, but but you'll, you'll benefit from it. And though I may read scriptures um, that are very familiar, try not to become so familiar that you're not hearing the revelation of what God is saying, okay? Because we can do that sometimes. We can listen to something and become so so familiar with it. Ah, oh, I know that story, but, but then it, it's something deeper to it. It's something deeper to it, and we're going to find that out today. Um, Matthew, the 25th chapter, in the 14th verse to the 30th verse, it said... For it is just like a man, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. For it is just like a man who was about to take a journey. And he called his servants together and entrusted them with his possessions. The first scripture makes my point. We are the servants of God and we have been called together because the Lord is entrusting us with his possession. Do you hear that? That's his possession. That dream that you're carrying is his possession. Come from a divine place. Remember, I'm going to keep on reminding you that it comes from a divine place. It comes from a, that's why you cannot mix it with flesh. It comes from a divine place. And when it comes from a divine place, people, you have to always go back and consult the divine about the how to, the where, and the when. Okay? Okay? You have to always go back and consult the divine about the how to, the where, and the when. Because it comes from a divine place. And so he said that he entrusted them with his possessions. To one he gave five talents, another two, and to another one, each according to his own ability. So um, there is no such thing as I can't do this. There is no such thing as I don't know if I could do this. Because he would not have ever given you that dream and that vision if some were hidden, hidden, in the corridors of your soul, of your human framework of as to why you were birthed into this world, if you did not possess the ability to do this, he would not have ever given it to you. Are you hearing me? Now, Dr. Biden, why do you say that? Because we have that ability in us, but we don't know that we have it. And we don't know that we have it because we've never had a reason to use it. We've never had a, use to, a reason to use um, our ability on that level. Because, you know, we hang around with Buki Nim. So, you know, we hang around with Ray Ray Nim. So, we, you know, it don't take a lot of ability to sit on eat corn chips and hot sauce. I just said something. Don't take a lot of ability to just keep watching the basketball game, watching the football game, watching everybody who is doing their vision. While you sitting on the couch watching them do the vision. Don't take a whole lot to do that. 
And so we have to get ourselves around people. Here we go again. That will challenge you to use the part of you that you have never used. I was talking to a friend of mine about um, losing weight. And he was telling me how he was going to the gym on his own for two hours every day, six days a week, just going, 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 and wasn't losing nothing. And he wasn't losing anything because the way he was working out, his muscles had already become accustomed to that hit. So they wasn't going to fire up and cause him to lose more weight. They were just going to keep him consistent with what he had already lost, but he wasn't going to lose anymore. And it wasn't until he got with a personal trainer and the trainer started making him make moves with his body and use muscles and wake up muscles that he had never used before. And it was the new muscles that caused the fat burn. Yeah, uh -huh, text that. It's the new muscle. It's the new muscle of the mind. It is the new muscle of the spirit that causes action, that causes the burn, that causes you to get results. And so you can't get that if you don't use that. You can't get to the next level. You can't tap in to the rest of your ability as long as you become accustomed to what you do all the time. And that's why you have to stimulate yourself to another level. And that other level is going to be uncomfortable. It's supposed to be uncomfortable because you've never done it before. It's called unfamiliarity. I'm not familiar with this. I don't know what I'm doing. This is not a familiar place with me. I don't know how. I don't know all the details. And that's God's only assurance that you're not going to get in his way. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense right there. So he said to one, he gave five talents to another two and to another one, each according to his own ability. And then he went on his journey. The one who had received the five talents went went at once and traded with them and he made a profit and gained five more. Likewise, the one who had two made a profit and gained two more. But the one who had received the one went and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. And the one who had received the five talents came and brought him five more, saying, Master, you entrusted, there's that word again, you entrusted to me five talents. See, I have made a profit and gained five more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful and trustworthy over a little. I will put you in charge of many things. Share in the joy of your master. Also, the one who had the two talents came forward saying, Master, you entrusted, write down a note, share, write that down, write that down. That hit my spirit. Share in the joy of your master. Okay? Share, write that down, text that, tweet that, whatever y'all doing on the side. Share in the joy of your master. It said, and one who had two talents came forward saying, Master, you entrusted two talents to me. See, I have made a profit and gained two more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful and trustworthy over a little. I will put you in charge of many things. Share in the joy of your master. There it is again. Share in the joy of your master. The one who had received one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a harsh and demanding man, reaping the harvest where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid to lose a talent and I went and hid your talent in the ground. See. You have what is your own. Okay, I'm going to stop there because many of us are, are familiar with that story. But I want to go back to the top and I want to show you a pattern in this. Um, a friend of mine and I, uh, Jojo Hill, we was talking about, um, talking about, you know, he was saying to me, uh, you know, you, you, you got so many gifts and talents and da-da-da-da. He said, but you are talented. And uh, we got on the, that, that discussion and it really prompted me to extend this lesson because we start talking about the preparation of the gift. Now let's look at something, people. It said, first of all, it was the master's possession. Number two, he said, um, he gave him five talents. And then he said, and this is what I'm going to do. He said to the one who had received the five talents, he went at once and traded with them and he made a profit and gained five more. Now, how did he gain that profit? Um, you would simply say because he traded. But how did he gain that profit? 
You can only gain profit, share to the point that what he traded, he was able to receive that back double. And there's a small key in that because he added value to what he had received. And many of us are gifted, but we're not talented. I'm going to let you think about that. Many people are gifted, but they're not talented. A gift is something that you get and you don't have to earn it. You don't have to have, you don't, the, the Bible said gifts and callings are without repentance. You don't have to, you don't have to be saved to have a gift. That's why you can watch basketball players and different people do whatever they do. And they don't profess to be a you know, Christian. You can watch people do all kinds of things because, because watch this, because they are not just gifted, they are talented. And there's a difference between being gifted and talented because watch this, many gifts that are in the earth realm, somebody else can do what you do. Oh, we, I just said something right there. Somebody else can sing as good as you or better than you. Somebody can write as you or better than you. Somebody can preach, pray, prophesy as you or better than you. Well, then what is going to make the marketplace choose you? over somebody else when you do the same thing. It's because you are an individual that is going to learn today that I must add value to my gift. I must know the value of what I've received. And how do I know the value of what I've received? I know its potential to reproduce for me. My God from Zion. We can have something and not know the value of how it can reproduce for you. And you are a person that's sitting as a gift. And what kind of gift are you? A jealous gift. Because what is jealousy? Let's really define what jealousy is. Jealousy is when you see somebody doing something that you can do better that you're not doing. Mm. Jealousy is when you see somebody doing something that you know you can do it better, but you just not doing it. And that's what makes you jealous because you have decided to become so enthralled over your gift, but you have not added value to the gift. And when you have no value to the gift, you have nothing to trade. My God, you have nothing to trade. If somebody gave them five talents, he gave him five because he knew his ability to reproduce it. Because he knew what I'm going to give him. He's going to value that thing and place value on it and make everybody around him know that it was valuable. He had to make known its value. Am I helping anybody today? Am I helping anybody today? You have to make known the value. You can't take it and keep it hid. And you cannot sit around just admiring it. You got to put it in position so that it can be traded. Why is it that he got five more? Because somebody saw that you have what I have. And you have the ability to possess what I have. Are you hearing that? How are you going to start a business and you've added no value to it? And then you walk up to somebody and say, I need a million dollars to start this building. When you have not presented them a million dollar project. You got it all in the bag and scraps and notes. And I wrote it down somewhere. And I wrote this on this notebook. And I wrote that on notebook. But you have not given a visual. You have not gotten with a graphics artist and laid out. If it's, if it's not even a Facebook page. Laid out for yourself a notebook, a visual of what it is you are expecting to have. So that when you present that with somebody that have some money. They can see that though this is just an idea on the page. But I see how this idea can double my money money. This idea can bring me double value because the person understands its value. And when you understand the value of something, you won't let nobody play with it. You won't let nobody mishandle it. This man gave these talents. And when the person came back and said, I made you five more, he said, now you can share 
in this level of joy. You can come up here where the wealth is. You can come up here where the millionaires are. Because now you took what you had. And you, and you positioned it to be something value. You placed value on it. Now it qualifies you for equal or more value. Which takes you now and puts you in a whole nother rank. In a whole nother class. In a whole nother realm. Are you hearing this? It said here. Wow, I just have to stop sometime and just go. And just go, wow. It's like, like, whoa. Really, God? So a person can be gifted and not talented. And you're not talented because you've added no value to who you are and to what you do and what you're trying to present. So you have nothing to trade. You have nothing to trade but an idea. And that's not big enough. That's not big enough for the corporate world. That doesn't make you a game changer, and it doesn't get you in the game, period. My daddy used to say all the time to us, uh, we got ready to go somewhere, and we were just throwing on something. He said, no, y'all ain't wearing that. We, ready to go to, we was getting ready to go downtown with him. And we was like, well, why, what, we, what, we, what you want us to look like? I want y'all to put some clothes on. We going down on Michigan Avenue. So I'm like, why are we going down on Michigan Avenue? And daddy taking us down there because he said he want to go down there to this pizza restaurant. Why are we getting all that way to where? He said, because you're going to be walking among the wealthy on Michigan Avenue. And if you ain't got a dime, you better look like you got something. You better walk like you got something. It's time to change everything about you to look like where you going and not where you been. Now, I just said something right there. Because too many of us got an idea that's done one ahead to where we want to go. But everything else about us still look like where we've been. You got to look like who it is you are expecting to become. Because why? You're that now. You're that now. You're not waiting on anything to happen. You're waiting for the manifestation to come into fruition. Because it has already happened. Because it's already been given to you. But who have you made to know that? And how have you displayed that value? How have you shown value to who you are? How have you shown value to the fact that they cannot erase you and they cannot ignore you and they cannot get rid of you? Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? What's the difference between you and the lady across the aisle from you at, at, at the office and both of y'all doing the same thing? Because I'm going to add value to my cubicle. I'm going to make it look like it's a Fortune 500 company. When I'm doing the same thing she doing, and she coming in walking on the back of her shoes and going to break and coming back and smelling like chicken. But I'm going to always look like this is a Fortune 500 company. And ain't nobody going to come in my cubicle talking negative. I'm going to go on my coffee breaks. Everything in here is going to help. Even if I can't play Christian music, I'm going to set something up and play a little classical music right here. Because everybody that come in this corner is going to say, oh, I feel something in this corner. What makes you different? Because I just add value to what I do. Because if I can't add value to what I'm doing for you, I certainly can't add value to what I'm going to do for myself. You have to present yourself to people that you're working for like I'm passing through. Boo, this is not who I am. I shall not be here always. And you better really, really, really take advantage of my presence. Because as long as I'm here, you're going to prosper. Because in about five minutes, I'm getting ready to be on my own. And what am I doing? I'm perfecting my gift on your premises, at your expense, and you're paying me to perfect who I am. Okay. Okay, I, I guess somebody gonna look at their job a little different today. Mm -mm, you paying me to perfect my character. You paying me to perfect the way I handle things, the way I do things. Uh, you, you, you actually paying me to operate and perfect the spirit of diplomacy. Wow. You getting me ready for my future, so I can't sit here and be disgruntled. Because this isn't the promise. This is just the past. Okay? Remember that. So what it's saying here? Let's, 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 let's look back at the lesson. It says, likewise, the one that had two talents. So you don't even have to compare yourself and say, they got ten or something, and I only got five. Because guess what? If you know the value of it, watch what happened here. I told you to write that down. Enter into the joy of your master. Both of them entered into the joy, entered into the class, entered into the status of their master because they produced. It wasn't compared to how much you produced. 
One had five and produced five. One had two and produced two. Are you hearing that? But they both got equal opportunity to have their status raised because they both showed value to what they had. Okay. Then it says, let's deal with the one. Let's deal with the one that said, and I also, the one who had, the one who had the one talent. Received one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be harsh and demanding man reaping the harvest where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter. Let's scatter seed. Let's stop right there. You know what his problem is? You know what his problem is? He got involved in what he thought about somebody else. He was so interested in what he thought about somebody else's attitude, somebody else's character, what somebody else get, what somebody, don't, don't, don't that sound familiar? That's what I'm talking about, that dumb stuff on this page. Don't come on this page talking about no dumb stuff about what somebody else is doing that's none of your business. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is a distraction right here. This right here, this man did receive a talent. He received something that was of value that he could have traded. And it was nothing but one. But had he went and traded that one and understood the value and not get his mind in another man's affairs, he would have entered into the same joy with his masters as, as those that had more than him. Wow, I just made sense right there. I hope you're listening. I hope somebody can hear this today because this is deep. This is where our distraction comes. We always talk about all I got is, all I got is, well, you know what? If I had more, I'm just praying that God would just bless me with more. Why? So you can become a bigger thief? So you can become a bigger note not doing nothing? So you can just become a bigger person that just sit on and do nothing bigger? No, that's not it. That's not it, people. I don't care if you ain't got but a little bit. That little bit is of value. I don't care if you ain't got but a handful. That handful is valuable. I don't care if you ain't got but 10 members. Those 10 members are valuable. And the reason why you don't see the ministry growing because you too busy counting what other somebody else got up the street and around the corner. You too busy putting value on what you see somebody else is doing. And you know what? They don't pray as hard as I pray. And why they got uh, 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 3,000 members. And they don't fast like we fast. And why they got 100 members over here. Well, you know what? I'm just going to, well, you know, we just going to just, just believe God anyway. And then you go into that self-righteous thing. Then you going to that. That's all right. Cause they, they carnal over there and they haven't fashion show that we just going to stick to holiness. No, it's a cop out. You're going to stick to that because you are afraid to do more than that. You're going to hide behind a title and hide behind religion because you don't want to make an investment in your people and push them to take their gift and turn that gift into a talent because you don't want to see the value in it. And how am I knowing what I'm talking about right now? Because if you got somebody at your church, and they got decorating skills. And you all throw a big Christmas party every year. Every year, oh, Sister Watermelon, decorate the, the auditorium for Easter. Oh, decorate the uh, church for Christmas. Oh, decorate uh, the church for Easter and all of this stuff and for a pastor's anniversary. But have, it ever, have you ever thought about saying, Sister so-and-so, give me a contract. Because now I see you have decorating skills. I want you to go. And I want you to incorporate your ministry and give it a name. Because this is your ministry. And every year for Christmas and Easter, we're going to... To give you the contract and if we don't do nothing but give you a hundred dollars we're trying to show value in who you are and not just use you and call it servanthood that's how we do people people that's how we do we see the value in people that is right around us and we won't push them to to, to, to do something that's going to show their value so that they can have a talent to be able to trade that talent into society to bring you back tithes and offerings but we rather use them for an isolated incident rather than expand them for destiny and to help grow your ministry so that people can see the value in your ministry. What you do for others, God will do for you. Oh my God, this is a teach today. It's the same thing with your friends. Don't use people. Don't do that. Respect their gift by helping them turn their gift into a talent. Don't just say, oh, I'm going to get Jenna to do that because, you know, she'll do it. 
Oh, I'm going to get so. Because there's a penalty to be paid when you allow your friends to do stuff as favors. Because when it's just a favor, they can do it. Uh, they can do it to the level that they feel like doing it that day. If they don't feel you that day and you done gave them something to do, it ain't going to come out right. Mm -mm. If they got something else that they hide about for the moment, it ain't going to come out right. Now you're affecting the friendship because you don't understand the power of agreement. We don't respect our gifts enough to ask people to do things to say, and this is going to be an agreement. We're going to agree on this. Let's agree on this. Let's write this down. Let's build a contract between me and you that when I need somebody to do my flowers, I have a friend of mine that does flowers, beautiful flowers. When it was time for me to get the flowers out in front of my house, I didn't just call them and say, well, you come and do my flowers because you just so good at the." No, when they got through, I paid them for doing my flowers. I paid her because you know what? She could go and do that for summer. Why did I pay her? Because all of my neighbors were saying, oh, your yard is so beautiful. Now I feel, I feel like I got the best yard on the block. I just say so myself. But, but, but the bottom line of it, that was somebody's gift. And that was me placing value on somebody's gift and turning their gift into a talent. That they can take pictures now and say, maybe I want to start a nursery of my own. Maybe I want to start a landscaping business of my own. This is the work that I have done. And this is what I was paid to do it. Wow, am I making any sense today? Am I making any sense today? Good Lord have mercy. We got people all around us. We are an infrastructure that we know nothing about. Your friends, everybody, that's why you can't hang around people that ain't doing nothing, people. People, that's why you can't hang around people that ain't got no vision, ain't got no dreams. You ask them, well, what do you, what's your talent? I don't know, I'm just waiting on the Lord to show me. Oh my God, you 42 years old, you still waiting on the Lord to show you? You still waiting on God to show you? What are you good at? What is it that everybody brag about that you do that's awesome? Do you bake cakes? Do you bake cookies? Do you tie bows? What do you do? Do you make do you make good slurpees? What do you do? Because if that's your forte, oh, well, every time we have a party, so and so, so and so, when she make them smoothies, we could die for. Okay, but then maybe you need to go into the into the uh, the, the the jamboree uh, business. Oh, when so and so make them sandwiches, baby, we don't call on nobody when it's football season. She make them. Well, maybe you need to open up a subway. Because last time I checked, it don't cost but $70,000 to open up a subway. There's so much opportunity waiting for us. And the reason why we don't see that opportunity, because we have not placed value on our gift. And it's not a talent to us. It's not tradable. Because we've added no value to it. It's just hand over fist. It's just, you know, sloppy agape. It's just what I love to do. And you know, we always say that. And you know why we say that? Because we're afraid to be confident in who we are. Because you know what? A lot of times you got to be careful at how the enemy trick you about your gift. Because sometimes people suffer low self-esteem until their gift is the only way that they can feel accepted. And so now you're embezzling from yourself. And you're stealing from yourself. What you can do for somebody is the only way that you feel accepted. And that's why you don't feel it worthy to ask them if we can come into an agreement. Wow. I'm going to step on that. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. Are y'all hearing that? Are y'all hearing that? Wow. I don't know what else to say today. I really don't. That just that just stumped me. Power of agreement. And so we stay offended all the time because we didn't have an agreement about our gifts. We stay offended because you just assume because they was my friend. They should have helped me. You just assume because that's my member, they should do that. You just assume because he go to my church and he know how to wash cars, he should just wash all the elders' cars and just be a servant. You just assume that a person will just be with you. And when you don't have an agreement as to how you do business, offense is the inevitable. 
is inevitable. Because agreements have to even be with your friends. I have agreements with my friends. You don't call my phone like that because you don't know what I'm doing. You text me and ask me if I can speak. I will tell you yes or I will tell you no. So I ain't got nobody over telling somebody, I called you nine times and you didn't answer the phone. Well, you know what? I just said, baby, bye. All right, I'll holler at you, Felicia. All that craziness. <laughs> all that dumbness. All that drama. For what? Because there was no agreement. And they kept going to voicemail. And I'm a working woman over here. Hashtag working woman. 24-7. Workaholic all day. You could dial me at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm still working. Because that's just me. I love it. I get an adrenaline. Because I understand this principle right here. That I am in the midst of showing my value. I am working to turn my gift into a talent. I am in the conversion principle. Talent. Talent means currency. What I'm able to trade also. What I'm able to get into return. So I don't have time for all that. So I say to them, you text me. And if I can answer you, I'll say, give me 10 minutes. I'll say, give me 20 minutes. I'll say, not yet. I'll say, tomorrow, not a good day. Even if I'm dealing with something. I have an agreement with my friends that I can say, not today, tomorrow. Dealing with something. Pray for me. I don't throw all of that on them. I don't. I allowed that they calling you. Girl. I, and I'm so mad. That. Nah. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I have to resolve that. Because that's not. That doesn't belong to them. That's unfair to them. So the agreement is. When I say not today. Not now. Don't push it. That's the agreement. And so our world. Stay disrupted all the time. Because we don't have agreements. We don't have a, we don't even deem it to necessary. Some of you all don't deem it necessary to have an agreement with your husband. You don't have an agreement with your children. Okay, now if you do this right here, I'm a black mama, so y'all got to forgive me. If you do this, I'm going to knock your head off. Okay? But if you do this, mama going to be proud of you. And you and I are going to have a wonderful relationship. If you smack your teeth like that again, I might knock them out. That's our agreement. Okay? <laughs> no. So I'm saying, you understand what I'm saying. It's an agreement. So how do you make people value your gift? By being relentless that you don't break our agreement. Don't break the agreement. Because the minute you start breaking the agreement, then you're showing me that you don't value me. And if you don't value me, you don't respect me. And if you don't respect me and you just with me, now you're just using me. And we can't have that. That right there is negative. Negative. Not. No. Uh-uh. I don't care how many ways you can say it. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Because I'm in relationship with you because I'm trading something. There's something you can do that I can't do. And there's something I can do that you can't do. And that's why we friends. Some of y'all are friends with too many empty people. Too many empty people that have nothing to trade. Too many empty people that bring nothing to the table but wasting your time. Mm -mm. You got to find the value in your relationships. And you got to cause the relationships to know the value that's in you. And you got to understand that everything that we do in life, because we are born for a purpose and we are put in this world for an assignment, that everything you do, you must do it with the power of agreement within yourself that I must turn this gift of God, this vision, this dream he has given me, I must turn it and convert it into a talent. Or I have robbed my master. I have taken what my master have given me and he trusted me as to the reason why he said, you're going to have your own Burger King or you're going to have your own McDonald's or you're going to own your own beauty shop or you're going to own your own barbershop or you're going to own your own car wash or your own limousine business. He trusted me. He knew my ability. He knew when he gave it to me that I had what it takes to give this back to him, multiply, my God, or he never would have gave it to me. So I must spend the rest of my days, every day of my life, every day of my life, people, I 
have a responsibility to Juanita Bynum to make sure that everybody I am connected with know my value and do not take me for granted. Know my value and I know your value because if I keep the value on the gift, we all have something to trade in to society. And now we're not Christians that's just jumping and speaking in tongues and running around the church talking about God will. When the way he will is through the knowledge that we have of our God and the way that he operates and the principles that he give us to live by. Well, my time is up. I pray that you've enjoyed today's lesson. I believe in you. I'm going to tell you that every day. I believe in you. I know you can do this. I know you've been called to do it. I know that God has his hands on you. I know that he trusted you. That's why you're on this page. And if you're coming on this page, you're a person that God is just tapping on the shoulder saying, I trust you. I gave you that gift because I trust you. I gave you that dream because I trust you. Now, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to go and bury what I give you? And are you going to go talking about when, you, you, when I needed something and God didn't do it, he did it for Emma, but he didn't do it for me and he did it for Joe. And why they got six cars and they ain't got one car. Are you going to sit up and throw darts at the master because you didn't take what he gave you? Are you going to let somebody else's business become your priority rather than you taking the gift that God has given you and minding your own business? And stay in focus. I taught on something for almost a year when I was pastoring in Atlanta. I taught on I taught on the subject one focus. I got something in here that I want to show you before I leave. Hope I don't mess nothing up. All the way over there. Matter of fact, I'm finna go get it because it's even easier to go get it. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. You see this? You see this right here? Now, s some of you all are very familiar with this person right here. Um, this is this is this is Cookie Monster. Say hi. Hey, hey. Um, everybody that 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 know me, they um for my for my birthday they gave me little Cookie Monster chairs. I got Cookie Monster little cups. I got little Cookie Monster stuffed animal that sits inside of a cup. And one day, I was going through that, what I'm talking to you about, you know, oh, I ain't, they ain't got this, and that one got that, and that one got that, and it don't look like, and God reminded me of something, and um, he reminded me about staying focused, staying focused, good Lord have mercy, uh, that's going to be my next teach, I got to teach that, tomorrow, stay focused, that's where we, that's where we going, we're going on focus tomorrow. And I said, my focus is off, and I don't understand why my focus is off. Good Lord. And a friend of mine at the time spoke this word into my life, and I never forget it. And I said, when, if, when I ever I see her again, I'm going to tell her thank you. She said, do you know how on Sesame Street, I don't care about all the rest of the animals and what they're doing on Sesame Street. If it don't involve cookies, Cookie Monster ain't interested. If they want him to say ABCs, he want to know. Matter of fact, am I going to get some cookies out of this? And if you want me to do the ABCs, all the ABCs, they're going to say ABCs, but they're going to do it by putting up how many cookies it is. If he's going to count, he's going to count cookies. Because I don't care what they brought to the table. He said, y'all can do it and dance or whatever, but I got one focus. Cookie Monster got one focus, and that's cookies. And that's why he... He holds his place down on Sesame Street. I don't care if you're watching Sesame Street. You don't want Sesame Street to go off until you see Cookie Monster. Because Cookie Monster has earned his spot by being focused. That's simple, right? And that's why he sits in my war room over there on the bench when I dance. Because when I come in here and I'm practicing dancing and your mind start wanting on this, he's sitting right over there saying, stay focused. This, okay, you going off some mess. It's about cookies. Stay right here. Stay right here. Get focused. It's about dance. It's not about all that stuff you're wondering about. It's about your gift. It's about your talent. 
It's about what God has given you. And it's about what he's expecting out of you. Don't be disgruntled. If you be faithful over just a little. You see what he said? Because you were faithful over a little. I'm going to make you to rule over much. Because you understand the value that's in just a little. Okay. It's a beautiful 